Thank you very much, sir, for those warm words of encouragement. God bless you real good, sir. I want us to put our hands together for the choir once again. They have had an introduction to my message. Choir, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord keep and sustain you. Your anointing will never run dry. On the last day, when the saints gather, your voice will not be missing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also want to join my faith with the choir as they sang. And I say unto you all, the Lord will keep you. The Lord will cover you. When you are hurting, the Lord will cover you. When you are going through storms, the Lord will cover you. Even in times of peace, his peace will envelop you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. Thank you, almighty God, for the privilege of being alive and seeing the beginning of 2021. Thank you, eternal King of glory, because today we have gathered in your presence. It is a rare privilege. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. As we gather before you, my Lord and my God, let our praise be acceptable unto you. Let our worship be acceptable unto you. And let your words minister unto us as a shining light in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let your amen be louder than that. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. I want to thank God for the opportunity to bring his words to you. And of course, I want to thank in particular our pastor and our leader, He's giving warm words about me, but I think he deserves much more than that. The only thing I can say is that the Lord will keep you, sir. The Lord will empower you much more than ever before in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And to everyone that is here today, whether you are physically in church or you are watching online, my prayer for you is that every day in 2021 will be a day of joy for you in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. My message to you this morning is in form of a question. Am I hurting myself? Am I hurting myself? That's the question. And my text is one hidden, almost obscure passage of scripture. You find it in Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31. Are you there? Okay, I read from the pulpit. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot the son of Aram his son's son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, his son Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from all of the Chadis to go into the land of Canaan. And they came to Ara and dwelled there. Verse 32. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Aram. That's a very uncommon scripture. But it has profound implications for us. The Bible says that Terah, that is Abraham's father, set out from his country, which is all of the Chadians, with the intention of going to Canaan, the promised land. It was he who took along Abraham and Lot. And in their journey, they got to a town called Aram, and they dwelt there. Now, we didn't know what happened in Aram. Perhaps he enjoyed the place. Perhaps he met situations and circumstances. Whatsoever it was, he got to Aram and he dwelt there. And the Bible says in verse 32 that he died there. The idea was to go to the promised land. He stopped at Aram, Aram and he died there. May you not die before your dream is realized. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any situation that will lead to an, abort an abortion in your journey of life, Holy Spirit will clear it in Jesus' name. Remember, my message is, am I hurting myself? And there are several things in life 
that hurts us. One of those things is Satan. The Bible says in John 10.10 10, that Satan has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Bible makes it clear that the basic agenda of the devil is going about prowling like a lion seeking womb to devour. My prayer for you this morning is that the devil will not see you to devour. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This year 2021, the devil will not see your ministry. It will not see your job. It will not see your family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When we say ought, basically it means that you are causing somebody physical, mental, or emotional pain. That's what ought means. You are causing the person physical, mental, or emotional pain. To hurt somebody could also mean that you are doing something or the person is doing something that is detrimental to the progress and well-being. So to hurt myself, it means that I am doing something that is causing me physical, mental, and emotional pain or injury, whether I recognize it or not. I am the architect of my own failure or of my own pain. When we say you are hurting yourself, it also means that you are doing something that is retarding or detrimental or slowing you down in your journey of life. I pray for you today. Is there anyone here today that the devil is already hurting? God will set you free. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So the devil hurts us. No doubt about that. But other than the devil, what we find is that people also hurt us. Every day, every moment, every time, people tend to hurt us. They hurt us intentionally or intentionally by the way they speak to us, by the way they look at us, by the way they treat us. And I can give you a few examples to illustrate that. There is a story in Judges chapter 11 verse 1 to 10. Judges chapter 11 verse 1 to 10. It is the story of Jephthah. The Bible says that Jephthah was a man of valor. He was a big and mighty man. But unfortunately, he was born by an alert. When their father died, his stepbrothers came together, conspired against him, and drove him out of his father's house. Thank God a chain of events happened. If you read that passage very well from Judges chapter 11 to the end, you will see that they came back to meet him after hurting him and driving him away. They came back to meet him and they begged him to do something for them that will make him their leader. I stand upon the altar of God this morning and I prophesy unto you, everyone devising your odds, all those treating you with disdain, they will still come back to beg you. They will still come back to plead for your mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You have another example in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 9 to 22. 2 Chronicles chapter 32, verse 9 to 22. For those of you who know, that is the story of a king called Sennacherib, who is the king of Assyria. One day, he thought to himself, I want to hurt the Israelites and King Hezekiah. I want to capture them. And he went about boasting, sending messages to the king to intimidate him and to cause fear into him that he was coming to capture them and there was nothing he can do. There was even nothing that God can do for Hezekiah. But in verse 21, that's 2 Chronicles 32 verse 21, the Lord himself sent an angel who cut off the leaders and captains of the king of Assyria. And the king had to return home with shame. Guess what? When he got home, it was his own children that killed him. Is there anyone here today that the enemy thinks that they have captured you? The angels of the living God themselves will move on your behalf. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So basically, we find that the devil can hurt us other people can hurt us. But more importantly, as my message shows, is that we can also hurt ourselves. 
we can also hurt ourselves. We hurt ourselves by the things we say, by the things we do, even by the things we fail to say and to do. Again, I will buttress that with scripture. First King chapter 12, verse 1 to 17. First King chapter 12, verse 1 to 17. That's the story of a king called Rehoboam. Now, in case you don't know, Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. Solomon was the son of David. Reading that passage, what usually comes to my mind is, how did Rehoboam miss it? We all know that our God deals with us generational. The Bible says Abraham was great. Isaac was what? Very great. And Jacob was what? Exceedingly great. Our God deals with us, with, with, with us generational, even up to the third generation. So if David was great, you already know that Solomon was greater than David, right? I expect that Rehoboam will be greater than Solomon. But that was not it. What happened? Rehoboam simply hurt his destiny. In his journey of life, he truncated it himself. It was not another person. If you know the story, some people came to him and said, please, we are still loyal to you, but please lessen our burden. And he said, go, I will give you an answer in three days. The Bible says he consulted with the elders that were with Solomon, his father, and they gave him an advice. He put it in his left hand. Then he consulted with the young boys that he was following. I made it myself, guys. I don't believe in God, guys. The Yahoo guys, whoever it is that they are, the young guys that he was following, that they were following him. And they told him, don't mind what the elders said. Tell them this, tell them that, tell them this, tell them that. After three days when they came, he told them exactly what the young guys told him. The end results. He, lo he lost his kingdom. Out of the 12 tribes of Israel, he had only one, Judah. And that one, he had it because of God's covenant. That's where the famous passage, to your, trend, to your tent, O Israel, came. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not lose your inheritance. You will not lose your destiny. You will not be the one to truncate the, great, the, the greatness of your generation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever is the status that your father reached, you will be greater. And your children will be greater than you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One more example. Gehazi. You have the story again in 2 Kings chapter 5, 15 to 27. 2 Kings 5, 15 to 27, Gehazi. Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. If you know that story, you will find that Elisha was the servant of Elijah. Three generations of prophets. Elisha, Elijah was a great man of God. When he was going, he got a double portion of Elijah's, Elijah's anointing, right? If I were Gehazi, and I know that history, I will be looking into a double portion of Elisha's, testi Elisha's anointing also. But what happened? He hurt himself. He truncated his ministry. You know the story with, uh, with um, Amman the leper. Because of greed, he hurt himself and he lost his testimony and the end result was leprosy. Our text this morning is very instructive. Terah. Terah was the one who originally conceived the idea to leave all of the Chaldeans to go to Canaan, the promised land. It was not Abraham. He only took Abraham along together with Lot, his grandson, because Abraham was his son and Lot was his grandson. He took them along. They were going to the promised land. But when they got to a town called Aram, he stayed there. Whatever happened to him, we did not know. The only thing we knew was that he died there. And that ended Genesis chapter 11. It was in Genesis chapter 12 that God now 
called Abraham and reminded him and said, rise up and go to the land that I will show you. Rise up and go to Canaan land. It was not Abraham's original idea. Check your Bible. It was terror. And I sat, I wonder. One song came to my mind. You know the song we normally sing? O God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jehovah, the man of war. If Terah had not stopped at Aran and proceeded to Canaan, perhaps, who knows, he might have become our father of faith rather than Abraham. And we will be singing, well, don't, mind my, don't mind my voice, O God of Terah, Abraham, and Isaac, Jehovah, the man of war, but he lost it. He uttered himself. I pray for you, children of God. Any good project that you have abandoned, Holy Spirit will help you to revive it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So basically, I've gone to this stage to show that we can ought. Satan can ought us. People can ought us. And we can ought, we can ought ourselves. Let me share with you very quickly before... I leave the pulpit. Some of the ways in which we ought ourselves. Number one, we ought ourselves by, by despising the word. Despising the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 105. The word of God should be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. It's not that you should do, despise it. Two, complaining and murmuring instead of appreciating and praising God. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. Blaming others and finding faults for our action or inaction. Some of the ways in which we ought ourselves. They may not be seen. We are not talking about sin here. But we are talking about things that you do that does not edify God, that does not please God and does not edify you. Blaming others and finding faults for our action. James chapter 5 verse 16 advises us, confess your fault one to another. Confessions and actions that limit us, Psalm 49 verse 3. Failing to let God help us. And I know that there are many of us like that in the auditorium here today or listening to the, my voice online. We have imbibed the belief of the world. We took God out of the equation. Thank God for uh, the pastor that led the prayer points. We took God out of the equation and we say, I am a self-made man. I made my money myself. We attribute the success that we have to ourselves and not to, to God. First Peter 5.5b 5 says, believe that we can succeed on our own and that we are self-made man. Another way is yielding to the devil. Believing that that is the way God wants it. Most Christians over-spiritualize their situation. Anything that happens to them, the Lord give it, the Lord take it. When they are in any situation, they find a spiritual meaning to it. Some may be spiritual, but not all are, not all are spiritual. They may be the work of the devil. James 4, 6 admonishes us. Resist, God resists the proud or resist the devil and he will flee from you. So these are just a few ways in which we can hurt ourselves. I would like to emphasize just one of them, which is despising the word of God. If you despise the word of God, you are only hurting yourself. Remember the story of Adam and Eve. God told them they were not to eat of a certain tree in the garden. But they despise that word. And they ate the fruit. And the result, the Bible says, was that they were full of shame. May I pray for you this morning. Shame will not be your portion. The date that the devil will come to disgrace you, that day will never come. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 13 says, Whosoever despise the word shall be destroyed. But he that fears the commandments of God shall be rewarded. 
Listen to me, children of God. It doesn't matter whether the word comes directly to you from God. The brother who led the prayer this, this, this morning talked about God speaking to him directly. God speaks to us directly. So it doesn't matter whether that word came directly from God. It doesn't matter whether that word comes from the scripture. And it doesn't matter whether that word comes from a man of God. The effect is the same thing. It is to set you aright on the path of your destiny. Do not despise it. I round up with an example. In 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 34. 1 Kings 16, 34. There is a story of a man there called Ea. He is of Bethel. The gentleman woke up one day and decided that he was going to rebuild Jericho. If you backtrack a little bit, you will find that when the Israelites overran Jericho, Joshua cursed Jericho. He declared that no one should rebuild Jericho. And if anyone was going to rebuild Jericho, he would lay the foundation in his firstborn and the gates thereof in his lastborn. That was the word of Joshua. Yes, it may not even be from God. It doesn't matter. But that is the word of a man of God. Then here comes this man that is called Heir. Only God knows what was playing in his mind. Don't mind all those pastors, Joe. Who told you that Joshua even said it? Were you there when he said it? How am I even sure that it will come to pass? He decided to rebuild Jericho. He despised the word of the man of God. And as he was laying the foundation, the Bible says if his first son, Abraham, died. He laid the foundation in his first son, Abraham. Read your Bible, it's there. If I were him, I would say, who? So this is true. Even if it's not true, I don't want to experiment again. Right? But he continued. And the Bible also said that he laid the gates with his son, his youngest son, Segum. May you not despise the word of God. May you not hurt your generation by your unbelief. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As I leave the pulpit, I want you to ponder on the ways in which you can hurt yourself. I have enumerated some of them. I have only been able to elaborate on one. But the Holy Spirit will illuminate it in your heart in Jesus' name. As you ponder over them, in the early days of 2021, ask yourself, how am I hurting myself? What are the things that I am doing that is not adding to my progress? What is the relationship that I keep that is pulling me down? What are my concepts, my thoughts that is acting as an hindrance to my progress? That is the path, or that is one of the paths towards your success in the year 2021. And if there's anyone here that is yet to receive Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior, I want you to know that you do not even have the foundation already. When, I ask by, when, when we ask ourselves the question, are we hurting ourselves, there is a presumption there. That presumption is that we already have the spiritual in control. That we already have Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. Because the best way for you to stop hurting yourself is to be led by the Holy Spirit. You don't know it all. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. But the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, will guide us into all truth. That is why you need to let the Holy Spirit into you. The Holy Spirit will come into you when you have said Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Whether you are in the auditorium this morning, physically, or you are online, you are watching. You have an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior so that he can lead you aright, so that you will not hurt yourself this year 2021. I want you to just raise up your hands where you are. Close your eyes and talk to your God and say, Father, I come to you this morning as a sinner. 
I ask that you please accept me as your son. Forgive my sins, write my name in the book of life. Help me to live only unto you. Guide me to do only the things that you want me to do. Help me not to hurt myself. Let the year 2021 be a remarkable year in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If you have done that, like I always say, if, especially if you are online, please look for the nearest redeemed church. Go to the pastor, introduce yourself to, the, to him, and they will take care of the rest. Just in case there are no redeemed churches around you, there should be, but in case there are none or you don't know, our advice is go to the nearest Bible-believing church. The God that we serve is one. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. For the rest of us, I want to conclude by us speaking to our spirit man. And I'm not going to lay it up in prayer. We are going to speak to our spirit man in songs. So can we please rise on our feet for a minute or two as we take this very popular song. I can see everything turning around, turning around, turning around for my good. Can you see everything turning around, turning around, turning around for your good? I can see everything. of understanding we can see everything turning around for our good. 21 will be our year. Everything that limited us, everything that stopped us in the year 2020, they will not follow us into the year 2021 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You told the Israelites, lo, the path is open before you. In these early days of 2021, we take possession of the year 2021. And we decree that 2021 will edify us. We shake the evil that is in 2021. And we say it will not be our portion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord will bless and will keep you. The lines will fall to you in pleasant places. The rod of the wicked will never lie upon you and your family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Surely as God lives, this pulpit is sanctified. This pulpit is anointed. Any prayer that is uttered here on this pulpit, they will come to pass upon your life. There will be manifestation in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please be seated.